Magic has its price, and technology has its limits, which are constantly pushed. My dear Acolytes, we all know that magic has its price, but today I would like to tell you the tale of human technology. High Counselor Myla stood in the chambers of her temple, surrounded by her students, with all manner of artifacts floating around them. The best way to view human technology is as arcane craftsmanship that does not rely on magical practices. Milo extended her hand towards one of the objects floating around her. It was a small fusion reactor that was no bigger than a large backpack. Take a look at this marvel of human craftsmanship, a device that powers their craftsmanship without need to rely on ether. All you need for it to work is water broken down into its basics, but it hardly can stand up to the energy that can be provided by our own ability to generate ether. Human craftsmanship has its limits. As she spoke, she connected this fusion generator to a particle cannon of human design, after which she positioned it in front of herself. The moment the particle cannon fired, her eyes began glowing with blue light, and a particle beam hit the shield she raised around herself. Then she extended her hand in front of the beam, and leaned into it as another beam came out of her hand. The beam from her hand was slowly overpowering the beam from the particle cannon, but such action clearly was exhausting her quite severely. Finally, the energy from the fusion generator began running out, and before it completely was expended, she stopped as to not damage the device. As you can see, even though it takes a lot of power to overcome it, I still can overpower this machine. Myla spoke once she managed to catch her breath and regained her composure. Her acolytes stood in awe of machinery, knowing that they would not be able to pull off anything like that, but found pride in the abilities of their mentor. But there is a catch about human technology. It always pushes its limits, and I was there when humans pushed limits of their technology beyond anything that we can master in our studies of magic. She explained as she began creating an image with her mind for everyone to see the events of that fateful day. We all know of this human by the name of Maximilian Hunter, one of the greatest minds of humans who advanced our knowledge of magic tenfold, but this is the tale of his good friend Mark Stoner, a prodigy in his own right. She narrated the story as image showed Mark Stoner and Maximilian Hunter standing in the lab, arguing with each other. Max? I will not resort to magic to defeat Noir Dems. The image of clearly tired Mark began speaking to more invigorated Max. Sona was wearing his white lab coat. Hunter, on the other hand, was wearing white mage garments filled with glowing gems. Mark, look at Myla. She crushed every machine you've thrown at her. Hell, she managed to stand up to power outputs from the base reactor, let alone our best portable generators. If you would apply your mind as I did to learn the ways of magic, we could be assets on the battlefield. Image of Hunter pointed his hand at Myla, who was examining destroyed piece of particle cannon, which he clearly just partially vaporized. So what? We will raise an army of human mages in a couple of days to fight in a war? Not only is it a matter of pragmatism, it is also a philosophical issue for me. We managed to get to the stars without relying on magic. And if we resort to it to win this war, we, in a sense, admit defeat. That our own science and technology is not good enough to ensure our place amongst the stars. Mark, despite his exhaustion, mastered energy to raise his voice in anger. Exalted Scholar Stoner, I appeal to your rationalism to overcome your arrogance. Let me teach your people, and you, how to use magic. And that's when Myla intervened, trying to reduce the tensions. After so many tests, she was assured that despite all the marvels human technology offered, it was no match for her magic. With all due respect, High Counselor, for starters that means we will have to rely on you to cultivate this so-called ether for us, and right now, all those other scientists and engineers, I need them working on the technological solutions to problems at hand, rather than training to become mages in their own right. Mark lowered his voice, realising that he was amongst friends, Yet something was still quite defiant in him, despite all the evidences. Mark, come on. For how long you've been trying to figure out the problem with the hard shield generator to no avail, maybe it's time to give up and seek other means. Maybe it's time to accept that this 
is as far as we go with our tech. Max pointed his hand towards an active device that stood in the middle of the lab, covered in the blanket with writing on it. Solve at the later date. The hard shield is working, it is the side effects we don't fully understand. Stoner once again spoke defiantly, refusing to admit defeat. What side effects? Milo was curious, usually those humans knew exactly what their own machinery did. It was quite surprising to hear there was something they did not know about their own machinery. Something that was a common occurrence with use of magic. Let me show. Mark pulled the blanket and activated the device. The lights on the device came to action and a purple disc appeared on top of the device, but something else happened. Suddenly lights started appearing and disappearing all over the lab. Mark spread his hands, indicating that it were the lights that posed so many problems for him. Hmm, how interesting, it's almost like unstable ether. Myla felt some manner of connection to the lights, and then the lights began following her command as she began directing them around herself. While Max was enjoying the light show Myla was putting up, Stoner focused himself, his eyes darting between Myla and the device. Then he began moving back, something in his head was making connections. Then he raised his hand, as if he was doing some mathematics with his fingers. They're gonna name an entire star system after me. Stoner's eyes were wide open with mad gaze as he uttered those words out loud. Then an image protruded by Myla picked up speed, showing Stoner working on the shield device, not on something else in his lab, with renewed vigour. Then finally, the day of the Noir Aldam assault came. Myla and the defenders of the base were putting up quite a fight, but they were no match to the power of the Noir Aldam witches, the, the Chosen of Dis, the most powerful mage wielders of the Noir Aldam Empire. They were eventually pushed all the way to Stoner's lab. Mayala was exhausted, so was Hunter, and they were about to make their last stand when a shield formed in front of them. The Chosen of Dis threw everything they could at this shield, but to no avail, while Stoner stood with some manner of helmet on his head, modified hard shield device on his back, and a new type of generator attached to it. How quaint. Now let me show you how real magic is done. Mark spoke as purple discs appeared below him and the generator to carry him and the generator over to the Chosen of Dis as they tried to overcome the shield surrounding him. Mark formed spears made out of hard light and rained those spears on them with devastating force, easily overwhelming their shields. He proceeded to systematically clean out the base of all Noir Eldam forces, getting quite creative with his constructs out of the hard light. The culminating touch of his demo were laser beams forming out of the skies as he was hovering above the base like a god. That's when the image stopped. They did name a star system after him.